My name is John Collier and I'm a professional burn knuckle fighter. Grew up in Wigan, went to Cansfield High School. I wasn't overly sporty at school really. And then when I was 12, I, um, I got into a little bit of boxing. As I've always been a kid, you kind of, you're in and out of it, you're in and out of it. You know, you're 15, 16, girls get involved and you start dabbling with a bit of drugs and a bit of drink and stuff like that. So I only really started taking it seriously and competing when I was about probably 25, 26. Um, that's when I really started, really sorted myself out, if you, if you will, and um, got really stuck into my training, got stuck into the strength and conditioning, got stuck into the diet, got my weight down, got super, super fit. So I only had my first fight, I think I was 27. I think it was in the June as I was 27 in, and I was 28 in the November. So I was, uh, I was a bit late coming to the sport, but by being a bit late, I knew I had a lot to do in terms of catching up. So I absolutely threw myself into it. I was watching it. If I wasn't watching it, I was out running. If I wasn't spurring, I was hitting the bag. If I wasn't hitting the bag, I was dragging someone in to take me on the pads. I was, I just became obsessed with it for a good six or seven years. It was all I did. It was, I think I might have had seven or eight cheap meals in 12 months at one point. I was, I was obsessed with becoming as good as I could be. I knew I wasn't going to be, I'm not silly, I'm a wise, intelligent fella, and I knew I wasn't going to be a turn world champion at 26, 27 years of age. I'm not daft, but I wanted to be, as is always the case, because I'm stubborn, the best that I could possibly be with the ability and the talent that I've been given. So I just went on the road fighting. I fought at home in Wigan, I fought in Bolton, I fought in Scotland, Liverpool, Manchester, uh, Leeds. I've been, I've been everywhere, I've been all over the place. Um, and I had, a, I had a good run, that was on like the unlicensed white collar, semi-professional kind of scene, whatever you want to call it. I had, um, I had a really good run, some brilliant memories, brilliant memories from that period. I met some of the some of the most beautiful people I know today in boxing are from that period. It gets a bad name, the unlicensed and all that, but I loved it. I loved every second of it. We've all boxed on the terrible shows, all the all the stuff that we've done over the years. I remember boxing in Ermston, there was a hole in the ring, but then I boxed in Aberdeen and it was a massive posh event. It was the two ends of the spectrum, but I met some of the greatest people on them. Some, some of them are still my friends to this day. I still speak to them daily. Some great people. So just before, just before waiting to the lockdown, the COVID lockdown, what a weird time of, uh, what a time of our lives that was. Uh, just before waiting to the COVID lockdown, it was February the 29th, actually, a leap year. I, uh, I boxed, I had what I believed at the time was to be my last fight uh, at the, Macron Stadium in Bolton, um, won it, won it over three rounds, three two minute rounds. And I believed at that point, that was the end of me boxing. I was just always gonna, because I've been coaching for years, so I just believed my boxing fix now is gonna come from coaching, and having a little knockabout with a lad sparring and stuff like that. Then obviously COVID hit after I retired, so we all sat on our asses for 18 months doing not a great deal. Um, we all put a bit of weight on. We all got a bit lazy. So October last year, October 2021, I got one of the lads in the gym to take some pictures of me. Uh, and I was up at 15 stone. I was not well up here. I was not well here and I was not well here. So I was just started training again, just started knocking about on the bag, doing a little bit of pads, just getting stuck into getting fit really. And then I was doing pads with my coach, Sam. We were working some pads in the ring. I was just sharpening up, doing a little bit of moving. And Kevin Harper, who owns the gym, said to me, there's still something left though. And in my head, when he said that, I'd already retired. I was already, I'm, I'm not bothered, I'm just, there might be a little bit left, but I'll just save it for sparring. I'm gonna knock about with the lads. I'll just save it for in here. And then, but it kind of stuck with me. And then I started taking sparring a little bit more serious. And I thought there might be a little bit of something left here. 
So I, um, I decided I was going to come out of retirement. So when I decided I was going to come out of retirement I, um, and go back into combat sports, I didn't, I didn't want to do gloved boxing. And I, I know I don't want to sound like I'm being arrogant or anything when I'm saying that, or disrespectful to gloved boxing because it served me so well through the course of my life in many different ways. But I figured I'd achieved what I, what I felt I could achieve in glove boxing. I won two British titles. I won a Northern Area title. You know, I, I, I travelled well. I met a lot of beautiful people doing the glove boxing. So I just thought I need a new venture now. I didn't know what that was going to be. I, I, I didn't know. I didn't. It's, BKB was always there because obviously burn knuckle boxing at the minute is enormous. It, it's it's getting up there with glove boxing in terms of relevance in terms of exposure everyone is now aware you know you've got professional boxers turning over to burn knuckle boxing you've got you know the, the likes of like let's reference bkb for example you've got glenn mccrory robin reed you know tom ross you've got genuine names in sports world commentating and interviewing at bkb events so it's not like it's just an underground scene anymore like it was in the 70s and the 80s so I figured I'd give BKB a go. Um, I had a look on BKB's website and I seen that there was um, the world titles were vacant at my weight. The British title was vacant at my weight. So I, uh, I set myself a goal and that is the goal to, uh, to get to the top of the mountain, so to speak. Um, short term, I don't want to look past September the 3rd. I want to... Um, I want to put in a good performance on September the 3rd. I want to show everyone watching it around the world. I want to show myself, more importantly, that there is something left. You never know, I might get in there at 37 years of age and it might not be there anymore. It might not, it might just be here in the gym and as soon as someone's there hitting your back under the competitive lights, it may not be there, but I believe it is. I'm very, very, very confident that it is with how I've been sparring, with the fitness work I've been doing, everything I do believe. Because I didn't get to boxing too late, I, I've not got miles on the clock that are gonna serve me wrongly at the back end of my career. So I do believe I'll, um, it'll, it'll serve me well going towards the end. So September the 3rd is the short-term goal, the long-term goal, British world title. I, the, I aim to fulfil the dream of all fighters, every fighter in the world, whether you're a journeyman, boxing on matchroom shows, or whether you're an unlicensed fighter, every fighter in the world dreams of wrapping a belt around them that says world champion. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna chase it. I'm gonna chase it. That's why I've been out running the rolls. That's why I've been lifting weights. You know, pulling sleds across the gym, hitting the pads for the extra round, you know. Nothing worth nothing worth having is given to you. Nothing worth having is easy. So you've got to get stuck in and get it done and see where this uh, this new venture takes me. So I want to give a massive shout out to all my sponsors. We've got Pen Vapes, we've got SK Holistics, we've got OmniFit. Valhalla Strength and Fitness, Standish Chiropractic Clinic, Jones and Son, AC Plastering, Salt Rose Tattoo, DAB Interiors, Hugo's Hideout Cafe, Forefront Construction, Clean and Sweep, and LBA. And if anyone else wants to get on board and help out, because the cost of training camp is astronomical, bringing in sparring partners, making sure your meals are prepped, everything's right. Special shout out to my main sponsor, these guys here, Hearn Group. Massive monetary donation to help with everything. They've also paid for me a hotel. Steve Daly over at Hearn Group. Massive shout out to you. Much, much appreciated. Everything you've done for me has been a big help. Has has all the help from all my other sponsors. You're all greatly appreciated. And I won't forget it when I put a world title around my waist. Thank you very, very much.